breakfast. <clears throat> this is, um, <clears throat> damn boy, I've got something in my throat. It's my favorite meal of the day because I love eggs. I love whole eggs, I love fried eggs. Minimum five fried eggs every morning. It doesn't matter if I'm trying to lose body fat, trying to gain muscle. In addition to the eggs, I've got cherry tomatoes and asparagus. Tomato being high in beta carotene and vitamin E also makes for a very good natural vasodilator. It increases blood flow, so that's something good to have before a workout. Usually I have uh, beetroot, which is even better in my opinion. Um, the asparagus mostly is, is just for satiating reasons. I don't find five eggs to be particularly filling. I could eat a lot more. So that's why I try and incorporate some veg into the meal as well. I also enjoy them. I can go months without like a typical sort of cheap meal. If you go so long without these things that you consider to be just part of a balanced diet, which is absolute BS because human beings went only thousands of years without all that stuff, you'll notice far less interest in them and your taste for whole foods is heightened in contrast to what it used to be when you were consuming all these super palatable products. By the way, with this meal too, I'll have like two large glasses of water. I usually have like two large glasses of water with every meal. If you're consuming a lot of food and you're training intensely, you've got to be taking in a lot of water. I know there is some people that they're indifferent to that, but um, that's what I believe. Mother Sky Coffee, the only coffee that will... Uh, <clears throat> I usually have a coffee with breakfast, um, which I'll have shortly after breakfast or with breakfast, shortly before I train. <laughs> Number two, if I don't train in the morning and I only train once, my second meal will be steak and veg, like steak and asparagus, maybe a little bit of onion. The reason I use onion, by the way, is because it's a natural flavoring. I try not to use sauces and things like that, anything artificial, but because I trained, my second meal is going to be a shake. I have this after every workout, really. I'm usually not too particular. I just grab a couple of handfuls of frozen mango and chuck in a large banana. Um, but I, I am being particular lately because I'm trying to actively lose body fat. So I've got 100 grams of banana in there, uh, 180 grams of frozen mango, and I'm going to pour in about 300 grams of egg whites, usually, I do whole eggs and preferably organic free range eggs, but this is just so much more convenient. With that, I'm gonna add a little bit of water. I don't like it too thick. And I'm gonna add some ginger. The reason I've been putting ginger in my shakes is not only because it tastes nice, I like the taste of ginger, but it's, uh, improves your digestion, improves skin condition, improves overall health. It's got a bunch of antioxidants, anti-inflammatory properties. Very simple, very few ingredients, but it tastes delicious and is much better for you than the stereotypical post-workout whey isolate shake that you'd buy at a supplement store or supermarket. The reason being is because you genuinely have no idea what is in those protein powders. It could be flavored talcum powder for all you know. The best way to know that you're getting X amount of protein, X amount of carbohydrates, and a good quality source of micronutrients is just to make something yourself post-workout. Mm. How does my hair look, Madge? I think it looks good. So full of shit. I know not everyone's gonna be able to eat absolutely every single meal at home. So what I thought I would do was show you how you can still stay on track of your diet and how you can eat well and eat clean eating out. 
So what I've ordered from here is just a couple pieces of grilled fish, grilled barramundi, and a salad. And the salad is without any dressing or anything, obviously. Um, and I'll have a little bit of salt on the fish. I'll usually have fish with, say, potato or sweet potato, um, but because I'm sort of being conscious of the amount of total carbohydrates I'm taking in at the moment, I'm minimizing that today. This is a pretty low carb day for me. I'm gonna go into carb cycling as well later on throughout the video and explain to you guys in detail how you can get away with having quite incredibly high carb days, cycling them with lower carb days to maintain or even lose body fat and stay lean year round. So I had the fish and salad. By the way, with that, again, a couple of glasses of water, a couple of bottles of water rather. Then I trained again. So I trained twice today. Always post-workout, I have some type of fruit. You know, in the shake earlier, I had banana and mango. Now I'm having an orange post-workout. Uh, not particularly high glycemic, it should be. But that's the best time of day to have sugars, is post workout. Why? Because the muscles are depleted of glycogen and the idea is to replenish those stores. There's nothing worse than a flat, deflated, lifeless muscle. So this fourth meal, yeah, fourth meal, turkey patties. So in these turkey patties are uh, ground turkey breast, 30 grams of oat bran. I don't use oats that often, but sometimes when I make things like this, like patties, to help bind the patties together, I'll use something like oat bran. It's still a very small amount of carbohydrates, which is what I want at the moment. I don't want anything too carb heavy. There's also some diced onion, and of course, some salt and pepper. You have to try this. You could do it with beef mince, chicken mince. I don't care. You could do it with almond flour. So nice, the onion, the natural flavoring from the onion is so good. Um, before I finish this, I wanted to briefly mention carb cycling. Usually year round, I'll go pretty low carb. And I know like a lot of you ask me what carb sources I rely on because I think carbs are just such a um, dominant macronutrient in the fitness industry today. But I don't tend to have that many carbs in one day. Like today was kind of normal for me. Maybe I'll have one additional meal that has carbs in it, like sweet potato, potato. And I'll do that for say three to four days. And then like on the fourth or fifth day, I'll have a higher carb day. On those high carb days, the only difference is that I'm including an extra meal or two with something like sweet potato or white potato. So it might be like 200 to 300 grams of sweet potato paired with white fish and asparagus that I'll have an hour before I train. Then I'll have that post-workout shake. And then an hour later, I'll have the same meal again. And you can see though, in that day, the carbs are still either side of the workout. I'm not spreading them over the course of the day because I don't want to be constantly spiking and crashing my insulin. One, I don't think that's healthy to do. And two, it makes you feel, or at least it makes me feel really sluggish and tired. Um, that doesn't result in productive workouts. So by doing that, by carb cycling, you're not reducing your total calorie and carbohydrate intake in a linear fashion, which is a bad idea when you're trying to lose body fat or maintain a low level of body fat because your body's constantly trying to fight against you and find what's called homeostasis, which is where your body feels most comfortable. So for example, if you weigh 90 kilos year round, and then you suddenly try and cut all these carbs and calories in a linear fashion, your body isn't accustomed to that, it doesn't like it, and it wants to fight against you, and you could just end up losing a shit ton of muscle, which is not ideal. And even if you don't, 
your muscles are just gonna look flat and depleted. So the best way to maintain a lower level of body fat, even get to a low level of body fat, is by cycling your carbohydrates. Go two, three days, half or less of the your regular carbohydrate intake, and then on that fourth day, increase the carbohydrates to even a little bit more than you would on say a normal or say moderate day. That's just one way to get yourself at a lower body fat percentage and maintain that level of body fat. Jeez Louise, I absolutely love steak. I love it, man. Like I'll, if I only train once in the day, I'll have steak as my second meal. Again, it's like that higher fat content meal furthest away from my workout um, or later at night, like either the second last or the last meal. To reiterate what I said, most of my carbs are either side of the workout and the heavier fat content meals like steak and eggs are further away from the workout. I got here grass fed Australian beef scotch fillet, no added hormones, beautiful, I love it. Some broccolini and I'll pan fry this other half of the onion I didn't use earlier and some baby spinach. This is a pretty micronutrient dense meal. I'm really looking forward to it. I know Madge is. He's salivating. Madge hasn't ate all day. He's just been watching me eat meal after meal and I haven't given him a scrap for Madge. Look at that. Look at it on the, on the monitor. It's... Joel, tell me your funniest joke. I don't do jokes. I am one. At least that's what my mum tells me. What I'll do while the pan's still hot, I'll turn it off. I'm going to pan fry and wilt a bunch of baby spinach. Look at the result. Look at the result of wilting spinach. It turns to nothing. This is my fifth meal of the day. Scotch fillet steak, some wilted baby spinach, broccolini and white onion that I stupidly decided to bake and uh, it's very dry. I'm not going to film my last meal. I do typically have six meals in the day. The last meal being about 300 ml of egg whites, two whole eggs that I'll pan fry along with some more broccolini or asparagus. You guys don't need to watch me eat for a sixth time and Madge is starving. The videographer hasn't had a bite to eat all day so I'm gonna give him a little bit of a break here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope I've answered some of the recent questions I've been getting about my diet. If not, leave a comment below. Hit the like button, the, the thumbs down button is broken for some reason, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. If you haven't, why? Why wouldn't you? I post a video like every 12 months. It's pretty frequent. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. The wind has stopped. Without any wind, the sailing boat cannot go. Oh, shit. Ha 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 ha!